Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning prayer this morning. Um, it's just me today. Uh, I'm really glad to be uh, here with you as we as we begin the day um, in some offering the day to to God. So that just gives a, a couple of moments to allow some people to join us today. Saying we won't get to see what the uh, what the weather is like in Buxton today. I'm very disappointed. I like my my weekly Buxton weather update <laughs> from John. <laughs> we'll just have to make do with a slightly misly black cool morning. So let's let's turn then to our um, time of prayer and we we'll pray together. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As you rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what's evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And in a moment's silence, let's just hold our day before God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our psalm this morning, Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him and be radiant, and your faces shall not be ashamed. This poor soul cried and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Fear the Lord, all you his holy ones, for those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those who are crushed in spirit. 
Many are the troubles of the righteous. From them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants and will condemn none who seek refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so our Old Testament reading this morning from Jeremiah chapter 9. Who is wise enough to understand this? To whom has the mouth of the Lord spoken, so they may declare it? Why is the land ruined and laid waste like a wilderness, so that no one passes through? And the Lord says, Because they have forsaken my law that I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice or walked in accordance with it, but have stubbornly followed their own hearts, and have gone after the Baals as their ancestors taught them. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I am feeding this people with wormwood and giving them poisonous water to drink. I'll scatter them among the nations that neither they nor their ancestors have known, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider and call for the mourning women to come. Send for the skilled women to come. Let them quickly raise a dirge over us so that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids flow with water. For a sound of wailing is heard from Zion. How we are ruined. We are utterly shamed because we have left the land, because they have cast down our dwellings. Hear, O women, the word of the Lord, and may your ears receive the word of his mouth. Teach to your daughters a dirge and each to her neighbour a lament. Death has come up into our windows. It has entered our palaces to cut off the children from the streets and the young men from the squares. Speak, thus says the Lord. Human corpses shall fall like dung upon the open field, like sheaves behind the reaper, and no one shall gather them. Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, for they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, says the Lord. And our second reading from John chapter 7. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jews were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now the Jewish festival of, festival of booths was near. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify against it that its works are evil. Go to the festival yourselves. I'm not going to this festival, for my time has not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone to the festival, then he also went, not publicly, but as it were in secret. The Jews were looking for him at the festival and saying, where is he? And there was considerable complaining about him among the crowds. While some were saying, he's a good man. Others were saying, no, he's deceiving the crowd. Yet no one would speak openly about him for fear of the Jews. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so our um, reflection this morning in our reflections book comes from Margaret Wick. And she's reflecting on that John reading. Let me just see if the whole thing will fit. Yeah. She says this, Tension and danger now surround Jesus and his disciples. Their movements are being watched. 
Jesus is a subversive figure of close interest to the authorities, and we know it's no ex exaggeration that they are seeking an opportunity to kill him. How will Jesus respond? Here, as in other parts of the Gospel, his family are keen to come forward with advice. A great festival is approaching when Jerusalem will be packed with pilgrims. Why not play to the crowds and take the limelight through a very public display of signs and miracles? Jesus is unmoved by this fallacious strategy. He's not a populist leader seeking fame and following for his, for his cause. He keeps his counsel, choosing instead to proceed to the festival in his own way and his own time. Once again, we are astonished at the clear-sighted calm with which Jesus makes his decisions. He's not pushed back and forth, whether by fear or by fortune, but presses steadily forward to fulfil his divine vocation. His overriding concern is to be faithful to God's timing and purpose, even though his path to glory must bring an a uniquely personal cost. In a fearful world, where leaders and influences jostle for the slightest tactical advantage, such poise and discernment are very rare qualities indeed. There's a great deal of truth in that, isn't there? But I think also for ourselves too, um, and how we can be swayed by what other people are saying around us rather than necessarily trusting um, in our own discernment, trusting in listening to God and following his path. Um, and I, I've been reading um, a lot of kings recently, uh, one kings and two kings. And I am struck really by how often um, those Bible characters are, are judged either by the fact that they were able to uh, follow God, you know, really listen to what he was doing or, or be swayed by what other people were saying to him. And sometimes even prophets um, who are saying, oh, you should do this, you should do this. And not, and yet one prophet of God who's truly listening to, to God, um, this in the case of Elijah, saying something completely different. So who do we listen to and who do we put our trust in? And um, may that be in God. And keep our eyes on him because it's not an easy thing to do that when um, people around us are suggesting we do differently or act differently, behave differently. So let's keep our eyes on God. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O oh my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. And Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let's turn to a time of intercession, praying for the day and its tasks, the world and its needs, and for the church and her life. Heavenly Father, we bring before you our day today. 
for all our tasks that we need to complete and the things that will come our way we don't yet know about for the people we'll have conversations with we pray that you would open our ears to listen and our eyes to see to see you at work in the world to see you work in our own lives and in the lives of those around us Would you lead and guide us always in your way? Heavenly Father, we pray for schools today and for teachers as they prepare to welcome back um, all of their students on Monday. And give you thanks for all that they've done over the course of the last few months for all the children they've continued to teach in the building and for those they have provided for learning from home we pray for an extra dose of energy and um, vision to see those teachers through to the um, Easter holidays. We pray for opportunities of rest, reflection and renewal. We pray this morning for the world, for all places of trouble, where there are countries at war in internal conflict. We pray for justice and mercy, particularly for those who are most vulnerable in our world, for women and children for orphans and refugees and we pray that we would have open hearts to welcome the orphan, the stranger, the widow into our own uh, lives, into our own country, into our own churches and that we would also be open to learn from them. We pray for the church, praying especially for the church across Blackpool today. Praying for vacant parishes. And that you would provide the right candidates to be the priests that would lead those churches and those communities. Pray for St John's, for Holy Cross, and for Bispam, All Hallows. We pray for our own church at St Thomas's as we seek a fresh vision, um, as we prepare for and begin to think about what our own pattern of worship and service and community action will look like as we come out of um, lockdown and as we look beyond the global pandemic. May we have fresh vision to understand why we serve you and how that impacts our choices on what we do.
Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject these things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things that are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you for joining us for morning prayer today. Um, as usual, we've got um, night prayer led by Nick tomorrow evening, which will be um, on the YouTube channel. And on Sunday morning, we'll be live streaming from the building, um, I think, already. If you um, are going to be there in person, you'll have already spoken to someone and arranged that. So there'll be a few uh, limited numbers with us in the church building on Sunday, um, but also will be live streamed. So I look forward to uh, joining you in worship uh, from wherever you will be in the building or at home. Um, next week, same pattern again uh, for our morning prayer and uh, church will be open on Wednesday between 10 and 12 for uh, personal prayer as well. So have a wonderful and blessed day and I look forward to seeing you soon in whatever way that might be.